Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back so today uh, we will uh, start one new chapter in fact chapter number 7 of the book we are following uh, so, the title of this chapter if I can remember correctly it is consumer producer and efficiency of the market or demand supply and efficiency of the market something like that ok. So, what is the idea what we are going to discuss in this chapter let me clarify first. Uh, see if you can remember one of the 10 principles ok 10 principles we have introduced long ago no in the first or second or third lecture ok. So, one principle was there that market is a good way of allocating resources right. In this chapter we will try to understand uh, it is not about market is a good way to allocate resources perhaps it is a desirable way to allocate resources within the members of the society ok. Any country, any economy some resources are there ok and if we or the those resources are allocated or distributed through market mechanism without any intervention free market mechanism what we are referring right without any intervention perhaps that is a desirable way also and that is that will be a best way also to allocate the resources among the members of the society ok that we will try to understand here. So, last few chapters we have discussed if mar free market is allowed to operate ok how the resources will be allocated ok say in a market. So, as we have discussed so far you know that in a market uh, some sellers are there of a product or service whatever it is ok some buyers are also there ok and they are interacting among themselves through that market ok. And as a, as, a, as a result as a result and we are getting some equilibrium price level what will be determined by this demand supply forces and equilibrium quantity of that commodity or that service uh, that amount that equilibrium quantity means amount of that commodity what will be transacted in that market at that existing or at that equilibrium price ok. Every unit of that commodity will be transacted at that equilibrium price ok that we have discussed ok. So, so far what we have discussed we have we have discussed perhaps some positive aspect if you can remember sometimes back we introduced two concepts called positive versus normative aspect right ok. So, positive aspect I, I hope everybody can remember still let me repeat positive aspect or positive statement are those statement are through which we are trying to narrate the world around us what is happening that we are narrating ok. In a class if uh, students get say average score in a particular uh, course uh, may be 55 percent. So, I am telling that average score of this class is 55 percent in this particular subject that is positive uh, statement just we are narrating we are trying to narrate the fact ok. Vis a vis what is the normative statement there is always some norm in the background of the mind sometimes those norms can be exclusively mentioned may not be mentioned the way that same thing 55 percent of the score of a class the person who is narrating how he or she is narrating through that you can understand it may be a normative statement say I am I am the person I am telling that average score of this class in this subject is not that much good if I tell good or not that much good like that. So, you can easily understand that there is some norm in in my mind or who is narrating that in his or her mind against who is he or she is telling that it is not good or because when I am telling it is not that much good perhaps the norm what is set in my mind as which is good that is above 55 percent right that is why I am telling it is not that much good. So, about the market so that though that the just the reminding to you people uh, what is uh, positive statement and what is normative statement. Normative statement is always attached to it some value judgment kind of thing right good bad ought to be it should be something like that is attached in a statement ok and positive statement is just uh, the, the this uh, this uh, chair is red color 
okay, that chair is blue color something like that. What is the fact that we are narrating? Okay, if I tell this chair is not or color of this chair is not that much attractive, that means the person who like me who is telling that perhaps red color he or she does not like, okay, some other color perhaps she likes. Okay. So, in that way, okay, some value judgment is usually attached with normative statement. right? So, what we are discussing now or so far we have discussed with the market and different forces of the market demand supply and all those, try to narrate using those tools market tools, we narrated how the market operates or how the relate, uh, real life situation occurs. So, we have narrated so far the positive thing. Today we are trying to narrate this market related thing some normative aspect. What is that? The way how resources are being allocated through market mechanism or the positive statement or positive aspects of that we have already learned. This chapter we are trying to learn whether that is a good way or not, whether that is a desirable way or not, whether that is the perhaps that is the that is the best way or not, that kind of thing we are trying to do. So, we are trying to invade into normative aspects of market mechanism through this chapter. Okay? Okay. So, the first thing is that see look at here in any market right as as we know that one customers are a group of customers are there alternatively a group of sellers are there right say some product say maybe rice. Okay? So, in a rice market right some sellers are there who are the producer of the rice right and suppose for some reason that equilibrium price in that market is determined as say rupees. 50 per kg rice rupees 50 per kg right. It is the general instinct general willingness from the customer side they will be always happy if price little bit less than this right. Customers always are looking for less prices to pay okay. and for the producer side it is just the opposite thing producers will always uh, will try to get a little bit more. Right. So, the thing is that if the market price is rupees 50 per kg, right, customer may not be that much happy, producers also may not be that much happy. Okay. Producers are uh, may be the case that some producers are looking for little bit more price, some customers may be looking for little bit less price and so on. Now, in the in the in the in the market, we can see that one given price, customer side at least some of them can be unhappy producer sides also at least some of them can be unhappy. Now, our question is or in this uh, chapter we are trying to understand whatever price is there in the market, market clearing price or equilibrium price, is it desirable from the entire societal point of view? We are trying to, we are trying to uh, investigate into that question, whether this price level, okay, whether this is desirable from the societal point of view, right. Okay. Let me let me as as we have we have narrated that demand price right that sometimes called or price what is what is what is uh, coming through a demand curve say suppose this is a demand curve we are measuring as usual quantity demanded and quantity supplied here price that side and if this is the demand curve okay the person who is standing here person who is standing here as a customer as a potential customer right the person who is standing here his willingness to pay for that commodity is one unit this much. Person who is standing here, his willingness to pay his or her is this much and so on. Not willingness to pay, that is the maximum willingness to pay. Okay? And if price is little bit less than that, this person, this person both will be happy because his maximum willingness to pay for that commodity is this much, but actually he is paying this much because that is the market equilibrium price. So, market is ready to sell the product to him at this price only. Okay, so, he is happy. Again, this person who is standing here, he is also paying something less than what is the maximum willingness uh, to pay by him, right? In that way, each of them are happy, right? Now, when we are discussing this demand curve, right, as if we assume that the commodity or the service for which we are drawing this kind of continuous demand curve, right? as if the commodity is perfectly divisible kind of thing we are we are assuming right means like say milk some liquid kind of product suppose okay 
so it's it's every small 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 units you can perfectly divisible uh, divide kind of thing that commodity so in other words we are telling that commodity is perfectly divisible kind of thing otherwise you will not get this kind of continuous kind of curve right suppose so try to understand or the question what we are searching for in this chapter right whether the equilibrium price is desirable from the societal perspective society as a whole's perspective right that we are discussing right so to understand that uh, certain concepts we have to know that called consumer surplus and producer surplus what are those we are coming to uh, introduce those concepts but to understand those concepts or to make you easy, easily understand uh, those concepts right let us first start with say as if our commodity for which demand curve or for which supply curve we are drawing in a in a market it is discrete kind of nature right say uh, say suppose it's a car okay let me go in an f phase uh, demand uh, f phase diagram say suppose we are talking about a car okay so we are measuring as usual price in the vertical axis and quantity suppose we are draw, going to draw demand curve here quantity demanded we are measuring horizontal axis since this curve the commodity we have, we have taken it is a, it's a discrete in nature more specifically one car two car three car uh, this kind of uh, numbers of the cars has some meaning right but if I tell 1.7 number of cars it does not have any meaning right but 0 0.7 number of cars, what is that, right? So, if that is the case, say suppose I am writing say this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, in that way, in that way, horizontal axis we are measuring quantity of the that product, no? So, number of the cars, okay, number of cars, right? Now, uh, there may be a certain people in this market, same car, okay, same brand, say maybe Hyundai i20. Okay, and specific uh, everything uh, all are the same feature, right? But the same car, I may have some willingness to pay or maximum willingness to pay for that car. You may be, may be having some different maximum willingness to pay. Someone else may have different will, maximum willingness to pay, right? That depends on what is the valuation of that car to me, to you, to that someone else, all those people, right? So, suppose the people who are there say for, suppose say for me or say say if we arrange this potential buyers of that car who are there in the market because we are we are trying to discuss the demand curve right. So, demand curve means what who are the potential buyers and what is their maximum willingness to pay that is important to know right. So, suppose if we arrange the potential buyers of that car okay, as per their maximum willingness to pay. Okay, the highest buyer that I am telling the first buyer, highest the person with uh, maximum willingness to pay for that car is the first first person I am telling. Okay, the person who has the second highest maximum willingness to pay for that same car, I am telling that the second person, and so on. We are we are referring or we are we are uh, labeling the persons in that way. Okay. So, obviously, suppose first person's maximum willingness to pay of that same car say suppose 15 lakh rupees, rupees all in rupees terms say price in rupees, rupees per unit or per piece of the car here unit is per piece no one car, two cars so or number of cars right. So, per unit, unit is here piece right. So, suppose 15 lakh is the first person's maximum willingness to pay. Suppose second person's maximum willingness to pay say 12 lakh rupees, rupees and so on, right. So, if that is the case, uh, can, can you think of what will be the demand curve for the same car by the first person and by the second person and so on, okay. Look, uh, let, let us assume uh, one abstract assumption also that everybody, whoever the potential customers are here. They, if, if they buy that car, they will purchase only one, one piece, okay? one piece they will purchase. So, definitely suppose this is the 15 lakh okay? and since the first person maximum willingness to pay is 15 lakh rupees, so there is no other people in the potential willing or potential buyer set whose maximum willingness to pay is more than 15 lakh. So, definitely if I draw the demand curve for that person because everybody wants to purchase only one car, 
right. So, definitely the first person's demand curve will be this red line. this red line look in between in between here there I am telling that this kind of dot 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 break kind of thing break kind of thing it means that in between there is no point of this like this point ok it does not have any meaning right this point as if that half cut this is the this is origin 0 or O this is the first curve right. So, this point means what ok some uh, half half number of car or something like that it does not have any meaning. So, that is why we are telling this kind of thing ok. So, definitely that person's demand curve this there is a this kind of break kind of gap and then this vertical line everybody understood because why that is the case this line is telling that if price is anything above 15 lakh rupees ok that person's quantity demanded for that car is 0 because his maximum willingness to pay is 15 lakh only. So, anything above this side price it will be 0 ok and his maximum willingness to pay 15 lakh. So, 15 lakh to 0 in between price price in between 0 and 15 lakh his demand for that car will be only 1 because everybody wants to purchase only 1. So, this is the continuous line ok, this vertical line is continuous line this red color, this vertical line is continuous line ok. Now, suppose if I want to draw the second person's uh, demand curve here, second person if at all part can participate in the market he also will purchase only one, one piece of that curve ok. So, ok, so exactly the same way. Uh, if we if we want to draw in this panel what is the demand curve for the second person right what it will be. So, definitely if this is the 15 lakh per FCR somewhere 12 lakh because his willingness to pay 12 lakh right. So, his demand curve will be this kind of green color look at here this continuously be there then there is a break here and then this continuous this continuous vertical line. Okay. this is the 12 lakh from here this continuous vertical line right that will be the second person's uh, demand curve. So, now if we want to find out the market demand curve as you know exactly the same way third person's demand curve also suppose third person's maximum willingness to pay is say 10 lakh rupees. Third person means what the in this entire set of potential buyers ok uh, who has the person who has the uh, third highest maximum willingness to pay suppose that is 10 lakh. So, if I I am interested to draw his demand curve definitely that will be this blue line suppose this is 10 lakh. So, his demand curve will be this until this then there is a break kind of thing and then this vertical line and so on. Now, if we want to draw uh, that uh, market demand curve in this market right how what we have to do we have to aggregate horizontal aggregation of all these demand curves right. So, if we aggregate that where we will land let us go afresh. So, market demand curve in this market will be this kind quantity demanded will be this side price will be this side here suppose 15 lakh price in rupees price in rupees 15 lakh here suppose 12 lakh, here suppose 10 lakh, ok, here suppose say 8 lakh, 8 lakh is the fourth buyers maximum willingness to pay right and here this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4 in that way, this is 5 in that way it is going right. So, how the demand curve market demand curve will be definitely above this 15 lakh price this will be the vertical line vertical axis itself because there is no demand but at the 15 lakh rupee. So, it will come this this dot 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 until that one unit this this will continue up to 12 lakh ok and then 12 lakh there is another demand second person have also demand right. So, there will be break here it will come to the second ok and it will continue. So, it is the mean is meaning is that above 15 lakh rupee there is no demand at 15 lakh rupee one demand any price in between 15 lakh and 12 lakh only one demand ok. Then when it is 12 lakh 
two demand. Why two demand? Because one demand from the person 15 lakh whose, whose willingness to pay is 15 lakh and another demand from the person whose willingness to pay is 12 lakh. So, at the 12 lakh it is gap. So, again it is continuing up to 10 lakh up to the third person. 10 lakh there is a, again at the gap this is the two until this two, this is the three, this is three right. So, here it will go until eight, until eight it will go. Then it will come. So, this is the fourth unit in that way. So, demand curve will be this there is a gap, this there is again a gap, this like that when and oh, every steps is basically when we are getting at this kind of step it is basically first unit, second unit, third unit, fourth unit they are corresponding there is a step. So, demand curve will look like as if a downward sloping staircase kind of thing right. Let me repeat again, let me clarify again why this kind of demand curve because there is no meaning of the car in between this no meaning of the car in between of this in between this in between this means if this is one and this is two in the horizontal side so in between this two means basically one point something some fraction in between one and two there is no meaning of a car of that number say 1.3 number of cars there is no meaning because the co commodity here or good here is a discrete good right so, that is the thing. So, this kind of demand curve we will get. Now, for some reason suppose this is the market price. Suppose at that price uh, car is sold in the market ok that is the equilibrium price. How that is the equilibrium price? Perhaps the supply curve is meeting this demand curve at that point that is why ok. We are not drawing the supply curve in this framework for the discrete good kind of case what how the supply curve will look like we are yet to introduce ok. We, we are coming to that. For the time being suppose that for some reason this is the equilibrium price say p style level. So, obviously you know that at, at that price level only three people are there yes only three people are there who will be able to purchase that commodity right. So, effective demand demand in that market is three only because so many people are there ok, but only first three people are capable to purchase that co commodity because its price is a in between where we mark it is in between 8 and 10 lakh no. So, suppose it is 9 lakh suppose ok. So, in this market three people are there whose willingness to pay is more than 9 lakh 9 lakh or more than that right. So, definitely demand as you know as we define earlier demand is willingness to get something or desire to get something, but backed by your purchasing power. So, here so many potential customers are there, but only three of them have the purchasing power which can tolerate the market price right. So, this is so, so this three so three people will be able to participate in the market. So, three number of cars will be sold in that market. Now, the question is by participating in this market, these three people who are participating who are able to purchase that commodity from that market right, what kind of what kind of welfare they are generating, what kind of value uh, uh, additional valuation they are generating. So, when additional valuation I am telling additional valuation or extra valuation additional valuation valuation sometimes that is called welfare also in this case ok welfare. What kind of welfare they are generating what we are trying to see here? we are trying to capture that my willingness to pay is 15 lakh rupee, but market price is allowing me to purchase that same commodity by paying only 9 lakh rupee. So, definitely why my willingness to pay is 15 lakh rupee? Perhaps what we have discussed earlier in the last lecture ok, perhaps the valuation of that car to me if I could quantify that in monetary terms that is equivalent to 15 lakh that is why my willingness to otherwise why I will pay 15 lakh rupee for that car right. So, that is the thing. So, essentially the person who has the or first person the way we have we have termed different person first person or the person with highest highest maximum willingness to pay that person is generating this area of social welfare or his own individual welfare of course, is a part of social welfare in this society. To try to understand by additional valuation means what then? So, this 15 lakh rupees is valuation to him, but he is paying only 9 lakh because 9 lakh is the market price. 
So, whatever the gap he is gaining that much extra that is why it is called additional valuation that is sometimes called welfare also that person is gaining that much welfare. Okay, okay. Second person how much welfare he is gaining? Definitely what is his willingness to pay 12 lakh, but he is also paying 9 lakh only because 9 lakh is market price. So, this is say, this green colored shaded area that is the second person's valuation of not valuation a welfare generation by participating in the market. And exactly the same way this blue color shaded area is the third person's welfare generated right. So, in this market by participating in this market, so total welfare generated by the customers as a group consumers as a group is basically the area of area bounded by this green line, this entire area. So, this, 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 this kind of entire area, this, okay. this we can tell consumers surplus, this area is termed as consumers surplus, consumers as a group that is why plural after that apostrophe s, consumers surplus. Okay. Consumers as a group how much surplus valuation they are generating, surplus, the surplus means excess no. So, excess let me repeat again, excess is basically how much valuation you are willing to pay and how much you are actually paying in between what is the gap, okay, that is the surplus. So, in that way we can think of this is the total consumer surplus and that much of welfare or additional welfare consumers are gaining consumers as a group. Look, there are so many other consumers also, but there is no surplus generated by any of those consumers, any of the consumers other than these three consumers who can participate in the market, there is no welfare generated by any of them. Why? Because they cannot participate in the market, right. So, that is the thing. So, to generate the welfare, first uh, the party does not matter whether it is a consumer or it is a producer, party has to participate in the market first. Okay, and then to some valuation or excess valuation they can generate. Exactly same way if we draw, if you understand this uh, demand curve, it is supply curve also is very easy. Okay, supply curve say let us quickly complete the supply curve, say price this side, quantity supplied we are measuring, right. So, I am generating or I am ranking the potential suppliers, okay, potential sellers, okay, all the suppliers who are there in the market, right. So, they are definitely say uh, most efficient. So, okay, so here in the earlier diagram, this person is the most efficient customer in the sense that he is the same good, same good, the first person having the valuation is the highest than the second person, then the third person and so on. So, this is the most efficient customer most efficient consumer in the sense that that consumer value this commodity uh, most among the all possible customers prevailing in the market, right. Exactly the same way this is the second highest efficient customer and so on, right. Exactly that way if we go for the seller side, okay, who will be the most efficient seller? Definitely the same product the seller who will be able to deliver at the lowest possible cost who incurred the least cost to produce that commodity, right. And exactly the same way if we arrange the uh, potential sellers, right, who are there in the market with the product, right. So, definitely suppose if I arrange those sellers, first seller I am telling first seller, uh, we are telling first seller to that person whose cost of production of that commodity is the lowest in that way second seller, in that way third seller and so on are there, right. So, if first seller's minimum cost, okay, he needs, he needs at least this much price to, to be able to deliver that product. And again, we are talking about discrete good only, okay. So, this is 1, this is 2, this is 3, this is 4, this is 5, in that way it is going horizontal axis, right. So, definitely if that first seller's minimum willingness to accept for that commodity, minimum in the sense that the minimum price what is required for him to be able to deliver the product in the market, 
right. So, if that is this price right, so obviously his supply curve will be will, will, will coincide with the vertical line for any price below that that minimum level right, but when price is this much market price is this much you will be able to supply only one. Okay. So, his supply curve will be this thing, his supply curve will be definitely this there is a gap here and then this vertical line. Okay. Now, the second seller say suppose this is say suppose say same car, okay, same car say suppose this is 6 lakh rupee. Okay. Second seller okay, suppose he is uh, he needs at least 8 lakh rupee otherwise he can't because he, his cost of production little bit more than the first seller. Okay. So, his supply car will be definitely this uh, green uh, or say blue color supply car, okay. his supply car will be anything below this 8 lakh rupee this is his supply car, it is coincidence or it is coinciding with the vertical axis we are measuring price here right and it will be then there is a gap here and his supply car will be this vertical line itself. Okay. So, in that way different seller supply curve will get and if you want to you get the market supply curve what you have to do exactly the same way we have to horizontally aggregate we have to horizontally aggregate because we are measuring quantity in the horizontal axis. So, if you aggregate that the market supply curve will be this kind of thing say this is 6 lakh. Okay. So, then there is a gap until this is 1 okay. then, okay. then this is going then suppose this is 8 lakh, 8 lakh there is a again a gap this is 2, okay. this okay. then gap, this then gap, this. Look let me clarify this distance and this distance, this distance there is no reason that all this distance will be same. That depends on okay, this may be this, that depends on after this price who is the first fourth seller or fifth seller kind of thing what is his uh, minimum willingness to accept okay, for that particular product, uh, he to be able to deliver that product in the market, what is his minimum willingness to accept. Right? So, in that way, so first, so here this that is going until 8 lakh because 8 lakh is the second highest, uh, second lowest uh, sellers, lowest in the sense that lowest cost in that sense, second sellers willingness to accept. Then there is a gap, then this, this will go to up to third, suppose this is uh, 9 lakh, so that is the third, right. So, these gaps are depending on what is the gap between, suppose this is the fourth seller, this is a 15 lakh. Okay. So, so, so market demand car, uh, market supply curve will be this gap, this gap, then this, then gap, then until this, then gap and so on. Okay, because this is the 15 lakh is the fourth highest or fourth lowest, fourth sellers uh, minimum willingness to accept. In that way we will get uh, this, 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 this upward sloping step kind of supply car, market supply car we will get. If the commodities what we are talking about or whose demand curve and whose supply curve we are discussing that commodity is discrete in nature. Okay. And exactly the same way if we have say this is the market price somehow right say suppose 10 lakh is the market price. Okay. We can tell that this is the surplus amount first seller is getting because this much price at that price he will be able to sell, but market is allowing him to get this much price for that car or that commodity. So, he is getting this much, second seller is getting this much, third seller is getting this much and so on and since fourth seller's willingness to accept is 15 lakh, he is not be able to participate in the market. So, producers, producers as a group, producers surplus will be bordered by this green color area, this, 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 this entire area. Okay. And of course, this surplus is basically again the welfare generated by the producers as a group okay, by participating in the market. Okay. Let us stop here and we will continue in the next, next lecture.